Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here, and today's talk is going to be on genetic predisposition and stress. So we have this kind of catch-all term out there, well, we just have to manage stress. And that's nice, and a lot of people, when they think of stress, they just equate it to emotional stress, right? Money issues, you know, relationship problems, dealing with the stress at work, dealing with the stress at home. But stress, again, it comes in many different shapes and sizes. Again, you can see when stress is activated here, we have our stress chain. And when that chain is pulled tight, that's analogous to stress being on the chain. And we'll go over what those stressors are. But we have this term genetic predisposition, or you know, I just have bad genes. And all that term really means is certain people in their genetic chain, if you will, may have weak links. Where if you hold stress on that chain too long, maybe the second link may break over the third, or the fourth, or the fifth. For each person, it may be different. And each person, that chain may be representative, the first chain, of diabetes. The second one may be more representative of cancer or female hormone issues or thyroid issues or obesity. So everyone's chain that may be weaker from that genetic perspective um, is going to be different for each person. But the key underlying denominator is if you don't want that chain to break, well, just stop pulling it tight. Stop holding it tight because that's analogous to stress. And so how we essentially take the tension off that chain is, is managing stress and figuring out where that stress is coming from. So again, when we pull this chain tight, we have our three major stressors are activated here. And they're going to be physical, chemical, and emotional stress. So you see that triangle of health there? That, that chain is pulled tight. And that physical stress, which could be old injuries, the chemical stress could be blood sugar issues, toxicity. It could be uh, food allergens, infections, and then we have our emotional stressors. And again, most people only think of stress as on the emotional side, but we see the chemical and physical side are also the most insidiously um, forgotten about. So again, when that stress is pulled tight, one more time here, you can see that chain is pulled tight, and if we manage our stress, the chain adapts and goes back to normal. But if we're not managing our triangle of health, or our underlying stress, you can see that chain's going to be pulled tight and that stress will stay active. So the blinking triangle is analogous to that stress hanging out and not being addressed. So if you have maybe the BRCA gene for breast cancer and you hold that gene tight, and let's say for you that cancer link is right here, well the longer that chain is held tight because you're being exposed to toxins and plastic, maybe you're eating foods that are laden in pesticides and you're rubbing a whole bunch of carcinogenic um, chemicals on your skin, well we know that most universities out there, MIT, Harvard and such, John Hopkins even too, they say 70 to 90 percent of all cancer is preventable. Yet the things that we need to do to prevent cancer aren't put out in the mainstream, right? When you go to the grocery store, most of the time they're asking you to, to donate for a cure, if you will, for the Susan Komen Foundation or what have you. It's for a pharmaceutical intervention. Yet most institutions will say between 70 to 90 percent of cancer is preventable. That, that's non-debatable right there. Yet most of the focus, if 70 to 90% is preventable, isn't even on what to do to prevent it. But just talking to a logical person, it makes sense if we know something is carcinogenic, meaning if we know a chemical is carcinogenic, meaning we know that in a lab it causes cancer, it makes sense not to eat or rub or put on our body. Because if we put it on our body, we know it eventually will cause cancer. And that's going to basically predispose, maybe you have that BRCA gene, that link may be your BRCA gene, and that may predispose that link to break. And then for that person, it may be cancer. For someone else, it may be heart disease, or obesity, or a thyroid issue, or a female hormone issue, or another autoimmune condition, or um, Alzheimer's or dementia. Again, the key thing is we have the ability to take the stress off the chain. So if we're pulling that chain tight, there's no amount of drugs that can take the pressure off the chain. We actually have to go back and a deal, deal with the triangle of healthier to actually pull the stress off. If we continue to keep that stress on there, the chain will eventually break. Now medications could help with the symptoms. Maybe if it's an infection, it actually addresses the stress up here. But for most chronic disease, uh, medication only covers up symptoms and does not actually take the stress off the chain and let the chain go back together. So the key take home is, is look at the triangle here above. I have other videos on these topics. Figure out where your stress is coming from. 
If you're having a hard time doing that, feel free and reach out. The information below the video will give you some uh, references on how to reach out to me so I can help kind of be the stress detective in your life to figure out the next steps for you to take to improve your health. Feel free to check the information below. Uh, subscribe to the blog and the YouTube channel for more free information. Thanks. Have a great day.